Let's watch Trish Reagan. Thank you. Peace on the Korean Peninsula is possible. Hello, everyone. I am Trish Regan. I want to thank the Universal Peace Federation and the organization's founder, Dr. Hak Cha Han Moon, for all that she and the Federation have done to promote a peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula, including bringing all of us here together, heads of state, members of the media, members of the business community, and members of so many different faith groups for this critical World Summit 2022. This is what it takes, coming together. I'm a longtime American journalist who has spent my career as a television news anchor covering finance, politics, and international relations. I'm a big believer in everyone in this world getting the opportunity and, importantly, the freedom to prosper economically. And for every human being to be able to go to bed at night not worried about whether there's a risk for war, a risk of starvation, a risk of losing one's ability to think and speak freely. And it's why I'm so honored to be part of this prestigious event here today. Again, my thanks to the Moon family for all they are doing to promote peace, as well as the co-chairs of this event, His Excellency Prime Minister Samdek Hun Sen of the Kingdom of Cambodia, and His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, former Secretary General of the United Nations. We are uh, we're living through a difficult period. As a result of the pandemic, we've learned how vulnerable we all really are. And as nations across the globe confront not just the pandemic, but increasingly the economic challenges that have come along with the pandemic, including a supply chain crisis, an escalating global poverty rate, inflation that won't quit, increasing conflicts now between nations, and sadly, a a persistent breakdown in the family unit, which in my view, as the mother of three young children myself, leads to so many other social and economic problems. I'll have more on the family in just a moment. But I just want to say, despite all this, right, despite all the challenges out there growing, there's hope. There's hope for peace. A unified Korea would show the world that anything is possible. You know, the support comes from the family unit. That's what helps a country to achieve prosperity. That's what helps achieve success and, importantly, peace. These are values I know Dr. Moon is passionate about as well. And these are values that have served South Korea so well. Consider the extraordinary transformation of the Korean economy. It really is the ultimate economic success story. And much of that success, I believe, comes from the family, including the mothers, who are there nurturing their children and helping them to find their own paths in the world. So just think. Just think about what it would mean if families could be reunited, if children could grow up with the security of knowing their whole family, their mothers, their fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins, their entire extended family. Consider the economic powerhouse that the Korean Peninsula would really become. The South has already proven it, thanks to strong family values, along with smart and early investment in the manufacturing sector, which has been diversified into numerous other areas, including technology. I mean, you think about South Korea today, it has become a world leader in innovation, a place where investors from all over the globe want to put their money because they know it will grow. South Korea has grown into the 10th largest economy in the world with nearly $2 trillion a year in economic output. So just imagine what it will become when it's reunited with the North. To put these accomplishments in a little bit of perspective, I think it's, it's interesting to look at per capita, per person, economic output in South Korea. You know, back in 1960, it was $79 per capita. Amazing. Today, According to the World Bank, it's actually around $32,000. So South Korea is clearly doing something right. It has created an economic model that we can all look to with such admiration. And like I said, it's just the beginning. Because a united peninsula could grow the economy so much more. 
enabling a united Korea to double or even triple its GDP in a very short period of time. I like to look at the contrast between the North and the South um, as, as just an incredible case study in how free market capitalism really does have the power to lift so many people out of poverty and inspire innovation, whereas communism robs people of their dignity and leaves them, as we see so many in North Korea today, in an actual state of starvation. You know, in South Korea, there's this tremendous advancement in innovation in medical care, and yet the most basic needs of the people in the North cannot be met, and it's not right. It's not right because the people deserve so much more. They really do, but you know what? The North and the South, they can be reunited. We can fix this together. It can be done in a peaceful way through nuclear disarmament. But to do that, we need everyone. We need the whole world on board. I know many Americans are committed to this. Many of them are actually speaking at this event, leaders that I've interviewed over the years, including former Vice President Mike Pence and former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper, and former President Donald Trump. But you know what? This can't be just a U.S. effort. This quest for peace needs to be a global one, which is why I'm so heartened to see 157 countries represented here. We need, that's amazing, we need collectively, all of us, to come together, one world, together, to look out for and to champion the human rights of the people in North Korea. And you know what? We can do that peacefully, using every diplomatic channel available. And if we do that, if we have buy-in and commitment from the entire world community, the Korean Peninsula can be reunited. Families will get to see their long-lost loved ones, and everyone in Korea will have the chance to prosper. Everyone will have the chance to prosper economically. You know what? That is good news for the Asian economy as a whole. It's good news for global investors. It's good news for the world, and it's also just the right thing to do. So thank you for everyone, everyone for being here, for your personal commitment to seeing peace in the world today. We've got a chance to do this. Your commitment matters.